Who's your backup goalie That's tonight? Really awkward. <clears throat> uh, what was the question? <laughs> so, um, as you well know, everybody's still on the ice. So, I haven't been out there. I know. That's why why I go media first and I walk into the trainer's room after. So I don't know. So, uh, John, what do we uh, learn from the fact that Ben is in the starters net for their morning skate? <laughs> I didn't. Is there a starters net? There's two nets. I think each goalie has the net they like to go to. So I, I don't. I didn't. I didn't know there was a starters net. I was not, I was never a goalie, so I don't know how they think. What will determine if he plays again? See how he feels after the skate, or how you plan to see him kind of face How many, how many more ways are we going to ask this? I don't know who's starting. I will find out after this media session. We have two capable goalies that we have one hundred percent confidence of who's going to play. Um, that's all I can say. I don't, I don't like one of them's playing. It's Vasily or Bish. That'll be determined tonight. Anything further? <laughs> Don't. I was so tempted to ask another former. Okay. I won't. Go ahead. Um, these two teams. Better the chance play, asking torts. <laughs> these two teams seem to have a comfort level of playing without the leader behind. Mm -hmm. What does it take to succeed when you're trailing in the playoffs? And what do you see from these two teams when they're behind? Well, the one thing you have to have, you have to have confidence in yourself and I think both teams well, I'm sure Chicago's had it the last few years that's why they're the team they are uh, we have a confidence in ourselves we just had to prove you could do it and I think until you get over that hump and win games when you're behind so we I think probably a huge building block for us was game five no what was Detroit game four in Detroit when we came back in the last five minutes and won that game. And those are building blocks. And then once you do it once, all of a sudden now you have confidence to do a second time. And then all of a sudden it's in your psyche that there's never a game you think you're out of. And you have to be able to, you have to be able to think that way. Uh, or what's the point? You're just going to end up losing these games. So we've grown and learned that, and we did in the regular season as well, but to be able to do it in the playoffs and you have to have a quiet calm about yourself. You can never get too high. You can never get too low. All those cliches, but you ultimately your guys have to believe that they can come back and 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 think in any situation against any team you can do it. And once we started doing it in the Detroit series, it's kind of snowballed from there. Does the same go for a series. Like you have to go through that once during the series. Well, I don't know. It we've come back in series, so now we know we can do it. So we never really sit back and say, "Oh, we're out of this series." Now it's a little different being down three games to two versus three games to zero that's a, it's a it's obviously different but um we they just boys in there got a confidence about, them, about themselves and uh believe me we don't want to fall behind in games but we know if we do that we have the ability to come back uh, seeing the way Hedman is playing it's it's hard to imagine he wouldn't have been part of the norris trophy uh, discussion had he not been injured <laughs> so early would you would you agree on that absolutely uh i was crushed for him when he got hurt and um, he I think really happy for him because when you're you're chosen that high in the draft he was second overall and um, I think your the expectations are so high for you and this is for me this is his coming out party and he's played this well for us for a long time we we just haven't had this for everybody to watch and I'm really happy for him because he's a phenomenal kid he works his tail off and he deserves this and and I've said this before um, you know Stammer's our leader up front Hedy's our leader on the back end and how a lot of how he goes we go and it's uh it's just it's great to watch him play the way he's doing and or play the way he is and and actually get the recognition he deserves he's a top tier defenseman in this league and that's why we're here. What's your plan with Jeanette on the wing? Did he play well enough in game two to receive another chance tonight? You guys are going to hate my answers. This, and this is what happens when you're day 55 of the playoffs or whatever it is. But 
we put the 20 guys in that day we think is going to give us the best chance to win the game. Jonathan Druin is a, is a big part of us. And I thought um, the other night, uh, everything we asked him to do, he did. Um, and is Jonathan Duran going to play tonight? He might. He might not. Um, and the one great thing about our team is everybody, we believe in each other. We believe in what's going on. We believe in the lineup that's going in. But as, as Jonathan proved he could play and play at more games in this series. Yes, he has. Coach, to get ready for a game like this, other than matchup adjustments or changes, do you have a feel of how this game is going to go or how it's supposed to go after watching the first two? Well, I know how it's supposed to go. We're supposed to win. <laughs> That's how I'd like it to go. <laughs> but it's uh, Q's a heck of a coach, and um, I'm sure he's got in his head his what his matchups are going to be. I don't can't sit here and pick his brain, and uh, I know that – uh, f some things are for certain. Uh, Duncan Key's going to play 30 minutes. I'm fairly certain that's going to happen. Seabrook's going to be right behind him. Jalmerson will be right behind him. Odillo will be right behind him. Fairly certain that's what he's going to do. Um, Taze and Kane are going to get their 20, and it's just going to go down the list. And none, none of that's going to change. Um, it's going to be our job to be able to defend them. And are we going to get our perfect matchups out there every single time? No, we're not. Uh, that's where the challenge comes in for other players. And the Headmans and the Strawmans and Garys and Coburns and all these guys, they're going to have to defend. And they're going to have to come out of their comfort zone a little bit and maybe defend guys they haven't defended before. And if forward lines are cut out there, uh, we've done this all year. And I've, I've said it before, we have four lines that I'm really not that worried when another line's out there. Uh, we're going to do our best to, to, to get our matches right. But ultimately, our belief has always been we're not – really worried about the other team we're worried about ourselves. and if we're playing well and to our structure and and we're competing um, you know the game usually takes care of itself uh, John whatever happens with your decision in goal with the goaltenders mm -hmm. would you say that you feel better in this situation than in the first round last year against Montreal or what are the similarities well I the, it's just two different teams. It's, way, it's two different experiences. And I think regardless of who was playing goal last year, and I, I truly believe if we had Ben Bishop in goal last year, I'm not so sure we still win that series. Uh, we were a little wet behind the ears. It was our first taste of the playoffs for us last year. I've watched all four of those games countless times this summer. They were a better team than we were. They played better. I, I, I shouldn't say they were a better team. They played better than we did. And it was a phenomenal experience for us. It was a stinging experience. But I truly believe, I don't know if we are here today without having that experience. Um, I will never sit here and say, oh, last year was we lost because of our goaltending. We lost as a team. And uh, fast forward this year, Ben Bishop's a better goalie this year than he was last year. Uh, we have the luxury of having Andre Vasilevsky as a... Uh, as a 1A, and he's he's going to be a star in this league one day. So I would have to sit here and say we're a little bit more prepared, we're a little bit more savvy, and we've got a little bit more depth. 